On the face of it, today's word from the cross seems merely functional. Jesus declares, I am thirsty. There's a deep irony, of course, that the one who promised to quench all thirst, to provide streams of living water to flow from within, the one who invited all who are thirsty to come to him, that he himself declares, I am thirsty. Let me share three thoughts about this word. First, notice the reason that is given in the passage as to why Jesus said these words. John records the saying in chapter 19, verse 28. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. According to John, Jesus said this so that scripture would be fulfilled. In other words, it's a deliberate message, a prophetic pronouncement. It's calculated that Jesus fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies. Some were beyond his control, such as his birthplace, his being born to a virgin, his clothes being divided at the cross, a spear being thrust into his side. Other prophecies were deliberately enacted out by Jesus to make it clear who he was, such as the choosing of the 12 apostles and the riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. By confessing, I am thirsty, he deliberately identifies himself with the psalmist of Psalm 69, a psalm about a righteous person suffering undeserved persecution. The psalmist writes in verse 21, they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. There may also be a recalling of Psalm 22, the psalm we considered yesterday, which begins with the psalmist crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's another psalm which describes the unjust suffering of a righteous person. It says in verse 15, My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Jesus places himself in the role of the righteous person in the Psalms who suffers for no fault of their own. Secondly, notice the way in which Jesus' thirst is satisfied. Immediately before being crucified, Jesus is offered wine mixed with myrrh, a painkiller to numb his senses, but he refuses. He is going to endure the cross fully alert. Now, having been crucified and on the verge of death, he is willing to receive wine vinegar. This is not a sedative, but it will enable him to utter his final words, which we'll consider tomorrow and Saturday. It tells us how this wine vinegar was given to Jesus in verse 29. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it on a stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. The surprising thing here is that a hyssop stalk is used. Hyssop stalks are not really suitable for lifting up a sponge full of vinegar or wine. They're likely to bend. Furthermore, they're only two foot long, woefully short for what is needed. Several commentators have suggested the author made a mistake and meant to use a different word, but there's no evidence for this. What there is evidence for is that hyssop branches were used on the first ever Passover, when Israel was seeking to escape from the clutches of slavery in Egypt. The final plague had been announced, the death of the firstborn, people and animals. And the Israelites were instructed to take a hyssop branch and dip it in the blood of the Passover lamb and then mark the doorposts of their houses with the blood so that the angel of the Lord would pass them by. The inclusion of a hyssop branch reminds us of Jesus, the Passover lamb, whose blood delivers us from death. Thirdly and finally, Jesus' words, I am thirsty, remind us of his humanity. He suffered as a word made flesh, a human being just like you and me. He was dehydrated. He hadn't drunk for hours. He would have lost a lot of blood. Along with the enormous trauma and exposure to the weather, a raging thirst would have generated within. When John wrote his gospel, there may well have been the beginnings of a threat to the church from a heresy called Gnosticism. Some were teaching that Jesus wasn't really human. He only appeared to be, so that when he walked, he didn't leave any footprints. By recording the detail of his thirst, 
John wants us to know that Jesus really did thirst. He really did suffer. He truly became one of us. The significance of this is that he knows our pain. He understands our struggles. He has experienced our difficulties because he too has endured suffering. So we can pray to him knowing that he understands. He is a righteous one who suffers for no fault of his own. He is a Passover lamb whose blood will deliver us from death. And he is one of us who knows what it is like to have a raging thirst. I invite you to pray to him and lift up your needs to him because he understands the struggles you endure. As Mother Teresa once said, the closer you come to Jesus, the better you will know his thirst. He understands. <laughs>